Hey there everyone, Has here with some more Cross Worlds content and today I will introduce and show you dungeons or dimensional boundaries. I will try to cover most of the core content available in the game before global launch, so subscribe if you'd like to be notified for them. One of your daily activities in Nino Kuni will be completing these instances, fighting through several packs of monsters and a final showdown with a boss. There are currently three dungeons on the Asia server and each of them have several levels depending on your character level for better rewards and challenges. As I mentioned, these dungeons are daily content, and so you will get a dungeon ticket on every daily reset that you can spend on getting rewards, and you can store 7 tickets at maximum. You can also complete these dungeons without a ticket to help your friends, other players, but you will not get any rewards. But it's still nice to have this option if you just enjoy the content, right? To enter, you can choose to either solo queue up or form your own party with 4 other players. There is actually a lobby system so this is pretty straightforward. But the neat feature is that you can start a dungeon alone and people can still join you in your, in your progress so you don't have to wait and queue forever. This is really nice if you start with a friend or 2 or 3 people and uh, the rest of the players are gonna join just for the boss later on so it's quite fancy. There are even challenges actually to complete them with less members, but more on that later in this video. The first dungeon is Neatrum's Lair. It is an earth element dungeon, so fire weapon and familiars are recommended to deal damage. I'm currently playing as a rogue in this video, and in this party we have a little bit higher level player helping us because the queues are somewhat long for low level dungeons, since most players are already in the upper levels on the Taiwan server. The layout is fairly simple and it's traditional dungeon, so you have to fight your way through a few packs of monsters, completing side objectives and challenges. The more unconventional part is that it's really not demanding, and it's up to the player to choose, but most of this content is being done while having auto combat enabled. This means the AI will use your abilities and attacks automatically, but it's still advised to move with your character and dodge roll out of AoE since auto battle does not dodge and there are some nasty enemy attacks, especially on bosses. This is probably going to be divisive, but I personally have been really enjoying it and if you feel it's boring or it's boring you, you can always just play manually, this is completely optional. But the game has so much to do and there's so much grind that quite often I just like letting it play and only minimally interfere. The bosses are pretty fun, you have your generic telegraph mechanics. AoEs to dodge with fancy animations, warning you where the ability is going to hit. This is particularly fun because, as I mentioned, damaging can be and is mostly being done automatically, but, but the AoE markers sometimes don't give you a lot of time to dodge if you just react to the telegraphs. Before a lot of abilities, the bosses in fact have specifically animated movements that hint the move they are about to do. Meaning, the gameplay shifts from executing your rotations and abilities properly into focusing on the fight, the enemy and learning the encounter with dodging. This is especially refreshing as someone who raided a lot in other MMORPGs. Don't get me wrong, I do love a great dungeon or raid, but sometimes you just fall into the trap that you're watching your rotation and your hotbar 24-7 and you just forget to enjoy the fight itself. In Nino Kuni, that is pretty much the focus and I love it, especially when grouping up with 50 other players or even 100 other players and world bosses, it's so fun to see dozens of players dodge abilities or die at the same time. It's just a perfect social activity where being with the masses alone is the entertainment. I would also like to note that I have a pretty old PC and the game must be using some black magic because I barely lag even with 100 players around me on the bosses. So. Expect some insanely good performance and optimization. But going back to dungeons, once you defeat the boss, you watch the cutscene, that has to be skipped by the whole party if they want to, because there is a protection for people who want to see the story without being rushed, so that's a good thing. But you watch the cutscene, you get rewards after consuming your ticket, and the party disbands. That's the process for a normal dungeon, but there is much more to them. Each dungeon has its own progression and a battle pass to them. A free progress bar and a premium battle pass that costs 3000 diamonds and a bunch of fancy rewards. This is on this server specifically, so it's subject to change on global. But as you complete the dungeon several times or complete challenges like I mentioned, with less party members or in a good time, the battle pass progresses for rewards. 
The premium battle pass here is pretty useful overall, gives really useful resources and also a huge time saver as it gives certain items such as skill books that can be a lot of grind. If you fully complete it, it also refunds a portion of your diamonds spent on it. Apart from the battle pass, these bosses also have a unique exchange shop assigned to them where you spend orbs you get from completing the dungeons. I would compare this exchange shop to a pity system. If you get super unlucky, you can spend your currency here to buy what you were looking for. So that's certainly helpful. But that's dungeons for you in Nino Kuni Cross Worlds. You will be doing them as a daily activity to farm skill books, accessories, and some other goodies, or just have fun with friends. They're short and sweet, definitely not a huge time sink as I mentioned. It can be enjoyed casually without too much effort, as long as you have the power level. There's more group content such as field bosses, world bosses, kingdom dungeons, etc. And I will be covering all this content hopefully before the global version releases, so stay tuned. Thank you for joining everyone, hope this helped, and I'll see you next time.